Welcome to the Have You Met Her Yet podcast, a podcast by Pink Crown Creative. I am your host, Lindsay Dent, the founder of Pink Crown Creative, a Vancouver-based marketing consulting company. This podcast was created to shine a spotlight on women in the workplace, who they are, what they do, why you should know them. In this first episode, I had the pleasure of interviewing one of my very best friends. We recorded it a few months ago in the backyard of my parents' house in Brampton, Ontario. As I listened back to it while I was editing this episode, I remembered how much fun we had and truly how much I didn't know about recording a podcast. We were in the backyard, as I mentioned. I had an iPhone that was shining a spotlight on us that was held up by a plastic cup. We had the microphone that we had strategically placed above the umbrella that was on the patio, held up by clothespins, and I had a camera without a tripod. Since then, I've definitely learned some new lessons, but I felt like this was an authentic episode to share with you, and we had such an incredible conversation. I absolutely cannot wait for you to meet Andrea from Beans Events. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Okay. (laughs) So, um, this is the Have You Met Her Yet series podcast. We are also filming and we also have it recorded. And I am here today with Andrea Green from Beans Treats and Beans Events. And she is my first guest. Yay! (laughs) Cheers to that. (laughs) Um, So we're actually in my parents' backyard in Brampton, Ontario. And I thought it would be really fun to have Andrea as my first guest. we have been talking about creating our own companies for so many years. Oh, ever. I mean, we had like a destination wedding <laughs> company that we wanted to do. Oh my god, a few years ago. <laughs> we We're both dead. had destination <laughs> weddings. And I think yes. after your wedding, we thought, you know, like people need a lot of help. Yeah. We both have just kind of been really creative. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we both just constantly think of being our own bosses. Being our own bosses, yeah. Bringing our whatever to the world. <laughs> our many skills and yeah, talents. Yeah, our, our best selves it's to true. to the world. Yes. Um, so yeah, I it's wanted true. to have her on here today because she started her own company, um, Bean Streets and Beans Events, recently. Yes. Um, and so I just wanted everyone to get to know her well. Um, so yeah, we're going to start with a few questions. And see how things go. Um, so the first question I have, which I always like to ask everyone, is what is your story? What do you do? And how do you get to Earth? Sorry, I'm going to start that again. How did I get to Earth? <laughs> how did you get to this planet? So first of all, what is your story? What do you do? And how did you get to where you are today in your career? Okay, so what I do is I bake homemade treats. And I also do homemade creations, and that can include any kind of craft that you're thinking for a project or a baby's nursery, a wedding, um, whatever kind of something you want to add. Basically, my kind of concept for Beans Events, which is the creation side of things, is mainly to make your place or event look like Pinterest but without you actually having to do the work because people want that look, I find, but they don't have the time to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They'd rather pay someone to do it because they don't think that they don't have the confidence in themselves to create that. And I find what I'm finding more and more before I get too far off track, but I do want to make this point is that most people have all these grandiose ideas, want to get them done, have bought all the crafts for it, thinking that they're going to have this time to do it. And mm-hmm. in most cases, they end up end up being, end up being um, weddings. And they're like, oh, I don't have time to do it because my wedding's next week and I wanted to get this in. So that's where I come in and I help make their dreams come true. And I just get to crafting. And then the beans events, or beans treats rather, is baking. So I just kind of combined the two and kind of made it like a two for one thing where you can get your treats and cookies, sugar cookies. Everyone wants to give those as gifts for showers nowadays, which is really great, really thoughtful, really yummy. 
and then making cakes for weddings, events, those kind of things. So yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, I started out baking when I was young. My mom and I had always baked in the kitchen together. That was like our us time. I have uh, three other siblings, so finding that time with my mom, I was like, I'll take anything. Precious, precious moments. For <laughs> <laughs> me to work. Yeah, so yeah, it was pre very much bonding experience, absolutely. So um, yes, that's where I started off. And she would also do crafts all the time. My mom was so hands off with hands on with crafting. She was a part of all of my um, school, uh, what's it called, teachers, PTAs, those yeah. kinds of things. I don't know what it is in different places of, of the country, but that's what it was called when we were growing up, which is basically just a parent council. And she would be a part of creating things for people so they could sell them for, to, for fundraisers. So very much creative for my mom. That's where I get all of my creativity from. I really give her all the credit in the world. You know, people call her Martha Stewart because that's how she, and that's a good thing, but that's how she is and that's what she would do. And then I would just be so happy to be creative with her. That was so much fun growing up. I really, really loved it and something that I hope to pass on to my own two bebes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I've been very lucky to be in the position of using her talents and services. Mm -hmm. As she mentioned, she did. Um, stuff for weddings and for showers and I mean for my shower she created the most beautiful cupcakes and nice. cookies nice. Uh, which I will post and show you some photos mm -hmm. and then um, for my wedding that was me I was that pin Pinterest bride yeah. looking for things that I could do cost effectively bought a globe yes. thought I was gonna have the time <laughs> to do it and realized I'm not that talented and I'm gonna put together something that is gonna look awful um, I knew Andrea was super talented in it and she came to my house the day before my flight <laughs> and created the most beautiful globe for me and yes. then um, throughout the week she made all of these beautiful little leaves that said everyone's names and I love just that idea. Love so that. talented so creative mm -hmm. um, so yeah it's really cool that that's sort of what you started yes so my next question for you mm -hmm. is um, let me just get this up and I would never have started any of those things without Lindsay, Aww. by the way. Just a little <laughs> anecdote there. If it wasn't for her telling me that I should be doing this Aww. since before time, yes, <laughs> that you know I should be doing these things and putting myself out there. So Aww. big kudos to Lindsay for getting my button gear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a little bit on that note is, do you have a professional mentor or someone who inspires your career? I have a few, like my mom obviously is one of them, God, obviously she gave me a lot of the inspiration, but there's a few artists that I just, you know what, I don't, I wouldn't say that I have just one, I think that that would be unfair to the many talents of this world because there are so many people out there right now that are making such beautiful creations, like truly. And you know, you go on Instagram and I don't know these people by name, I couldn't even give them a shout out if I wanted to, which I do want to. But there's so many people who I just constantly scroll and just say, oh, my God, they're so talented. There's their art so beautiful. You know, their creations. It gives me so much inspiration for when people come to me saying, do you have any suggestions or can I, you know, what do you think about doing this? And I say, well, I really saw this really beautiful thing and I, I couldn't even list them all, to be honest. So yeah. my mentors is just people on Instagram who are sharing their stuff. Thank you so much for all those that do. You don't know who's watching and who you're inspiring. And you know, keep it, keep doing that because you're inspiring people to not plagiarize. I wouldn't say that because I don't ever take someone's and photocopy it and make it and do it exactly the same. I always have my own spin off, but it gives me an idea. Yeah, just something to start with. Definitely. definitely. And then I take it from there because I never want to copy someone else's work. I think that's really unfair, and it doesn't give them credit for the things that they're putting themselves out there for. And I would right. be. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If and I mean, did that there's a me. lot of creative ways that you can give credit to someone, exactly. you know, like you can tag them in a post or exactly. you know, you can mention something, um, give them work credit is due. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I can't even say those people's names right now because I don't even know them offhand and yeah. I would be like so rude to like get their name wrong. <laughs> but yeah, there's Instagram, Pinterest is a huge, it, like there's so many people I'm just constantly scrolling and being like, you search one word and like a million things come up and you're like, yes, yeah. this is the inspiration I need. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to those people and shout out to those creators of those, you know, creators of Instagrams and the creators of Pinterest who are giving people a space and a, like a, a place to work from. That's so great. Yeah. So, great. so on that note, mm -hmm. do you find when you find 
pieces of inspiration um like where are you cataloging all of it are you keeping photos like yes. where, do, where are you keeping all of this inspiration do you have like a vision board or anything screenshots screenshots <laughs> yeah and i i'm laughing because i i i'll take screenshots and I'm i don't ever queen of screenshots and the amount of times i have to like crop it because i'm like this so is true. the screenshot of my phone you see the date maybe that's, that's a text exactly message that exactly. comes I'm up laughing because i'm like this is exactly what i do it's so true but yeah, that's that's what I do, and I, I like I don't even put in. I'm so bad. I don't even put it into like a folder where I can be like, you know, current project or so and so's name. Ideal, so smart to do, yeah. but of course I never do that. Someone so. needs to come up with like yeah. an app or something that's so, gonna start. Yeah, that, and of right? course I'm scrolling through my phone. I'm like, I know I took a screenshot of, it and I see like my kid's foot or something like that <laughs> in between, and I'm like, oh, this is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. But yes, that's basically who my mentors are. Awesome. And just the Food Network. Just anyone who's doing something creative. Thank you. Keep yeah. doing it. I'm watching you. Power Don't know to your the name, creatives. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, so the next question I have is, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into your field or wants to create a company like the one that you've created? Contact you, <laughs> first and <laughs> foremost. Not even joking. That's seriously my first advice. And it's funny enough because I had, this is going to sound like such a plug, like you planned this, but I swear <laughs> to God, this is actually what happened. Friends helping friends. <laughs> but it's true. I had a, recently I had a customer of mine who hired me to do her cake. She have, had a, wanted to start her own business for a really long time, didn't know. She came to me because she knew that I recently started my own business. And she's like, how did you start? And I was like, legitimately from Lindsay, because had she not shown me even just the basics of how to get started, I probably would still just be making cakes for my friends and family. I'm Aww. not even joking. Like, I'm, This is going to sound like such a plot. Hashtag ad. <laughs> no, this is not. I swear this is the truth. It's, it's totally Hayden hot chocolate, maybe. <laughs> Me but, and cheese as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but honestly, so that's, that's where I got started. And again, I think like always having the conversation of wanting to do something for myself and be my own boss has always been in the back of my mind like oh maybe one day I'll have the confidence to do that but if it doesn't happen I'm okay with that too and then just seeing you step out into the world and being like forget my nine to five and I'm gonna do this and I'm like well, I really don't have an excuse now because my best friends out here live in her truth so <laughs> Freaking... just lighten some fire thanks a lot <laughs> I have two businesses <laughs> no but I love it so it's great okay That's cool you. That's all you boo oh no uh -huh. I just I just spread spread the love <laughs> Um, so the next question I have is, what is one resource that you can share that has been really beneficial to your job or career? Oh, uh, just, not even like a, so again, like my Pinterest, of course, and Instagram, which is, you know, so like social, yeah, media, social media, of course, of course. And just, you know, like even just self-help books, I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. Because I'm all about self-help books. Yes. I'm currently reading a book called The Gifts of Imperfection. And oh. I've, I've read this book, reread this book, and I've learned something new from it every time. And I will find the name of the author because shame on me for not knowing. But we'll put it in the notes for, yes. for what the author yes. is. But no, we'll be there. <laughs> but just the, what, the reason why I say this book is because... I think especially when you're starting out, out in your own business, you want everything to go perfectly. Yeah. And you learn very quickly that shiznit is not going to go perfectly. It is truly not going to go perfectly at all. Yeah. And there's going to be so many hiccups along the road. You're going to want to give up a million times. You're going to be like, this person is so much better than me. Why am I doing this? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, all the time. The noise is there. The chatter is loud. It's Absolutely. It's chatty chatty. So I'm like, you know what? This is... I need to find something to cope with this. I need to find something that's going to help me progress. And of course you can listen to Gary V, which is obviously a huge inspiration for any entrepreneur out there. You know, sometimes it's a little bit too much, but <laughs> I love you, Gary V. Um, but sometimes you're just like, mm, I can take it or leave that advice. But there are things that he definitely says that I think are inspirational as well too. But just self-help books, things that will help you to be confident, to, you know, listen to that old cliche that is fear is just a four letter word but mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of those things i think you know just whenever you hear that noise in the back of your of your head and that voice telling you that you're not good enough you're not going to do well this is such a bad idea just combat it with something if you can't find it within yourself to combat it go to a resource and that is self-help books 
inspirational quotes, whatever it yeah. may be, whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. Whatever so works true. for you. Just don't let that noise creep in and absorb your thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely <clears throat> agree. I always look to self-help books and I mean, yeah. there are some times when I don't feel in the mood to hear that True. inspiration, oh, yeah. the self-help, yeah. etc. But oh, yeah. for the most part, it, it really, really helps. Well, that's just it. Like, I think, I think what you have to do is you have to be in a situation where you are no longer accepting of that, inf like mm -hmm. that noise that's in the background, mm -hmm. that you no longer want to hear that, that you want, like you, you hear yourself raising the issue, but you haven't brought your own solution. Yeah. So you need to find a way to bring that solution. So whatever that is for you, that's just what works for me. Yeah. Because I love to hear other people f up and fail. Yeah. And, and then and see I mean, how they overcome it. Real life, right? Yes. I mean, everything isn't Instagram perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I always find the greatest inspiration when I see someone I'm looking up to, and hear that it took them a long time, yes. and it's not that easy. And you're not making a million dollars mm -hmm. in your first year of business. Exactly. You know, it's a lot of struggle, a lot of hustle, yes. and yeah hoping that you keep kind of dusting yourself yeah. off and coming back out there. Exactly. And I think even onto that point of like, even if you're doing it for the money or you want it to be that you're making so X amount of dollars, I think if you're doing something and money is your main motivator, I mean, then if that's the case, just work your nine to five. Yeah. Like don't give up that nine to five because that's where you're going to make your money. Yeah. But if you want to be doing something that you love and that you're bringing to the, you know, something that you love and brings to the table plus that cash, then do that yeah because if money is your motivator you're going to be so unhappy oh yeah it's so, so unhappy it's so because true. especially at the beginning you're not making a, no you're making nothing yeah in fact you're probably giving out more oh for sure absolutely yeah yeah it's yeah. a lot of free work at the beginning oh yeah yeah, yeah. so the <laughs> next question i had for yeah. you is um if you were to do anything now that you're not doing already what would it be and why are you not doing it now vacationing <laughs> why aren't I on vacation <laughs> um, no I think you know what to be honest one of the things that I need to be doing now is I need to be taking some kind of a course to brush up on my skills um, because and so what skills would you be just brushing up on? mainly like with my craft of, of um, baking and stuff like okay, that okay, just okay. tweaking here and there because I'm all self-taught like I'm nothing I've I have done is anything I've gone to school for and I just think that having that professionalism under my belt would help me so much more um, to be that much more efficient, not even so much better than what I already do, but just being that much more efficient. When you go to those schools, they've already figured all, all the, the tricks of the trade. Right. That's right. what I need to get better at, efficiency, because... I want this craft to be something that I enjoy long term right. and I feel like I can't enjoy it long term if I'm spending so much time on it that I'm not being as efficient at right, it as I right. possibly so could be. if you had little tricks and tips exactly. here to kind of... Yeah. That would make me enjoy what I do more, which I already love it, but it would make it that much better for me. Plus then I can move on and do other things and... Quicker. Exactly. Yeah. It just... It, it, what anybody in life is always looking for more, more time. I yeah. don't need to tell you what I have in my life that is keeping me from wanting more time because we're all in the same boat. So I think that if you can find ways to make yourself more efficient, then do that. For me, it would be taking more courses or even studying more online, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever that may be for you, then I would suggest finding ways to do it because you're just going to enjoy what you do more and then you'll be able to price accordingly too because you're not you know, overcharging someone for something because it's taking you that much longer to do it. Yeah. So that's my, that's my tip. Yeah. No, I love that. I mm -hmm. love that. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, the next question I have is what is one thing that you're going to make happen this year? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to make happen. Oh my, <laughs> oh my God. I guess there's actually two like things. Like that you're going to be held accounted for accountable oh, for shit, Lindsay, I know you're you gonna will. be you online will, yeah. <laughs> whatever you're saying right now oh, people are gonna be like Andrea <laughs> you put it out there I'm gonna make it really easy and be like I'm gonna make 500 cookies this year which that's I already a great have goal. Already have, so for I'm this done. weekend <laughs> <laughs> something that's like by this end of this weekend I'll have done but no um I think what my goal should be and I've been holding this off for so long 
and again, it's just my own noise that I'm self-help book, self-help booking my way around <laughs> is creating my own website. I'm such a tool. I feel like I'm like even saying the words out loud. Like, why don't I already have it? It's like, but it makes you more accountable when you I say know. it and when you tell other people. That's my greatest lesson you. of my business <laughs> is when you say it and you talk to people, yes. it's real. It is and real. then you know, it's it's something that again. Mm-hmm. It's now out there in the universe, yeah. and, and, you know, you never know what can kind of come from all of that. It's so true. So I do I do need to get a website up and running 100%. I have to. I've been holding it off for so long. So, yeah, that's one thing. And then also registering my business as well, too. Okay. Yeah, so those so are those two are really two... great and attainable goals, for sure. <laughs> Definitely yes. something that you can tackle. And probably business basics. <laughs> like, I feel like those are like the fundamentals. Don't follow my business plan because I feel like you should, when you're as established as I have been in the last year or two of doing this stuff, you should probably already have at least those. So. But you know what? That truly is such a true statement to many entrepreneurs. I, know, I so was true. the exact same I when I started my business. <laughs> I didn't have a website for the first year. Mm -hmm. I just got a logo last year. I'm two years in business. Um, It's one of those things where I find (laughs) you don't need it until you need it. Like I got my business card done and my logo the week before Mm -hmm. a big conference. So (laughs) it's just what you do. It it lights a fire under you to kind of get things going. I have yet to make, meet someone who had every everything perfectly all aligned, checked, all yes, the boxes checked. Yes. That's just not mm-hmm. how how life works. No, so it's not. Don't feel bad. I don't, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you. I should feel bad about it because it's not even like a matter of of like an excuse. It's just a matter of you should have had it done already. There's no reason why you don't. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so the next question I have is, can you give one piece of advice to um, female in the workplace to overcome challenges? Wow. Um, well, I don't want to like start a revolution. <laughs> but I feel... I feel like this is something that I'm still so working on and I feel like so many women are, especially in this 2019 world that we're living in, is just the self-advocating. I need to do that basically every day of my life, like I think any other woman does. And I think especially, you know, some of us have it harder than others and I think that it's really, really, for some reason, it's really, really hard. I don't know why that is, but it is. And it's a struggle that I struggle with daily, but it is also my putting it out there goal for this year mm-hmm. is to advocate for myself more, stand firm in my um, in my position on things and not let other people influence me to either mm-hmm do something even if it's as basic as lower my price or you know to and as something as grand as you know lower my standard or my moral or whatever it may be I think that that is going to really be my goal from not just not just for this year but for every day of my life hereafter I think that um I need to get better at it and I think the only way to really com- combat that because I'm not just going to raise the issue without bringing a solution like I've already claimed earlier I think the way to really do that is just to have self-forgiveness for the times that you haven't advocated for yourself. Right. Yeah. That's huge. Yes. To forgive yourself. hundred yep. percent. And to learn from how that feeling made you feel. Like we all have that moment where we're like, really freaking wish that I did this instead yeah. of that. And just saying, okay, well, you know, how can I do that if that situation arises? How, how will I be able to be confident enough to say that? and stand in my convictions and be able to present myself so that there is no wiggle room there Mm -hmm. is no budging i am doing what i'm doing i am saying what i'm saying period yeah and that's it that's yeah totally i think that's such a good um thing to kind of be stern with and stand your ground on because it is really hard to flip back and forth it's a raging with war. the way that you feel, yeah. the way that you think things should be. Yeah. But I think once you get that confidence, 
you won't even question it. You it won't is. even go back and forth. And You'll the, just be yeah. like, no, this is it. Why would I exactly kind of go back from something like that? And the people pleaser in me always wants to cave. Like, of I always course. want to be like, okay, I'll take it. It's all wrong. It's all right. Go ahead. Okay, so the question I wanted to ask you next was... Um, if you can name three things that someone has told you you are good at mm -hmm. or what they admire you for. Okay. So, three things. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this is so hard. I'm <laughs> it's hard to talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, recently someone said that I'm very patient, which if you saw me at home with my children, you'd probably disagree with. <laughs> no, it's, uh, but with, I have... I also work part-time, I should probably preface with this, I work part-time as a um, bank teller with a financial institution, I'm not going to name any names because I'm not <laughs> going to hashtag add them, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> but um, just for reasons of that I've signed, I can't really go into speaking about this financial institution without their express consent, mm -hmm. so I will leave their name out, um, but uh, I'm very patient, I am very patient, I'm very patient with customers very patient with a lot of things and uh, I think that's I think that's why I don't really fear the beginning stages of the of the business I think that's worked to my favor in this instance because I am patient I know that if something doesn't happen overnight for me I'm patient enough with myself and with the with the journey to know the process, yeah, yeah the process exactly to know that you know what I don't have right now will come so I think that that's kind of been beneficial to me. Um, I'm also really good with customer service. Uh, it's something I get complimented on all the time. I think that when people are paying for something, the least you can do is be courteous. And you know, we spend, especially in this day of the consumer, we spend so much money on oh stuff goodness, all yeah. the time that when you're actually dealing with a human, because that's rare and few and far between now, the very least that human can do is be a friggin' human. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. It's, it's very true. And I can totally advocate for you being an incredible customer service person. I mm -hmm. mean, we went to high school together and <laughs> a lot of our friends to this day laugh at Andrea mm -hmm. for her overly courteous <laughs> attitude and even calling a pizza person and asking for their name and thanking them and <laughs> because that's just the person matters. she is <laughs> it's true I, I, and it's funny because yes when we were growing up I'd order I would be the person to order pizzas because people would just want to hear me say what was your name oh Jared thank you so much for that you've been great thank you and like at 13 years old yeah. like you know what I mean she, so, she knew she knew yes <laughs> and I just again like when people are paying for something and yes it's your time too it's not to discredit what you are in that situation and if someone's being a d-bag and whatever, I love to kill people with kindness. Nothing satisfies me more. I completely agree. Oh my god, I get a sick thrill out of it. I agree, oh, especially if someone is so particularly good. douchey, being yeah. a jerk. Yeah. It's just one of those things mm -hmm. that you can put a smile and be like, oh, yeah. "Have a lovely day." And then day. they can't get mad at you. They can never take it to your <laughs> manager about true. it because yeah. they're gonna be like, "Well, was she? Well, how, did, did she say well? something yeah. to you? Was she rude?" No, it's so true. It's the best. So. I I love it and I just I have like that little like kill them with yeah, kindness you know? absolutely and, and you're like no you're not gonna break my day Mr. Customer <laughs> like you're not gonna ruin me yeah you're one person in the sea of millions and if you choose to be crappy cakes and that's your point like that's you go on and do you do you just not gonna do mess up you me. yeah so absolutely absolutely that's two and then the last one <sighs> people do admire my my craft especially I would say even more so like people always I think because you're so oversaturated with like treats and cookies and there's baking championships and people always tell me I'm very good at all that stuff yeah but I think what people have started to really admire is my craft in making crafts the fact that I can make things look so well done and I think it's also one of those things like I'm always some I, I'm always somebody who really appreciates a really good singer yeah I can't sing to save my life but I sing anyways and I appreciate someone who can sing and who does good vocalism and who can just belt it out shut up Mariah Carey like just you know <laughs> friggin Ariana like oh, yes you girls are killing it and I'm so jealous of their talent because I wish I could sing. I try I tell you right now I freaking try 
only me in my shower will ever know the ear piercing sounds and whatever dogs live in the neighborhood but it's true I try my best it doesn't come out that way so I think when people see me do a craft that they wish they could do yeah especially like a craft that you know frick I wish I could do that yeah. I, I wish I had the ability to do that I'm like well thank god I have something because yeah. if I can't sing god damn it so, like, it's gonna be my you craft you recognize talent and people recognize the <laughs> exactly. talent in you as well and then I that's what makes me appreciate the compliment that much more because I yeah. know how much I wish I could do something like sing but I can't so when someone appreciates something in me it makes me feel good that I'm at least able to share that because where Absolutely. would we be without MC and Aria and the yeah. <laughs> Where would we be? I don't want to live true. in that world. <laughs> very true though it, it, and it's one of those things that it's nice that you can recognize that yes. and, and realize mm. not anyone can do that right? Yeah. Not anyone has well, that type of Well if we all could then I'd be out of freaking business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. True. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next question I have mm -hmm. is do you have a personal quote that um, you live by it could either be a personal one or a famous quote no cuts no butts no coconuts no, I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no I you know what okay this is the one thing that I will always say that I don't ever say unless I know I'm gonna go back on it you're gonna understand why in a second this the stupidest saying in the world is never say never but I will tell you one thing. I live my life by that saying because anytime I've ever said never in my life, I've always ended up doing it. Oh. And so what's I don't never know right if this now? is like the universe. <laughs> and this is like, I, I'm curious to yeah. see actually how many people You're in their lives. There. I, if somebody ever says, if I ever, if you ever hear me say, you won't ever catch me doing that. That's me saying I will never do that. Mm. Because if I ever say, no, I will never do, I'll freaking end up doing it like clockwork. I know I will. But if you ever hear me saying, I will, you won't ever see me do that, then damn right, I, will, I won't. I won't <laughs> ever do that. But okay, it, we're going to hold you to that. I'm going to see like what. It's the what truth. Is I don't know there. why I figured this. I don't know when I figured it out. I don't know what time in my life, what stage, when it was. But this is one of those things. Where it's like you know when you get a, an itchy palm yeah and money comes to you one of those stitches mm, <laughs> stitches interesting i'm a little stitious <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> to, okay to quote the office i'm a little <laughs> stitious but that's one of those things so i that's why i will i won't ever say never yeah i won't ever say it justin bieber shout out <laughs> shout out to my beebs my boy beebs uh, um okay so mm. the next question i have is how do you keep motivated <laughs> Is a fly out here? No. Um, like, what makes you get up and continue to want to do? Three things people say I'm not good at. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so, okay. Well, skip. One of the things that I have a huge fear of is disappointing my clients. I don't ever want to let them down. I don't ever want them to feel like they haven't received their money's worth. Yeah. I don't want them to ever feel like. Um, you know, I don't ever want them to give me a bad Google review, like, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Like, I don't want any of that. And I, and I know it's inevitable. That's real fear, though. For and sure. I know, like, there are some people out there that you just cannot please. I've of lived course. in the service industry long enough to know that you could have offered them Jesus Christ himself. And they would be like, hmm. Yeah. But was it, you know, zero hundred BC yeah. Jesus Christ or was it modern day? B you know what I mean? Like there's people out there who will just ruin your life for the sake of ruining a life because their life is so ruined. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They so, have nothing better to do yes. but kind of bring someone else down, exactly. unfortunately. Or they want a piece of your pie. Like, you know what I mean? Not yeah. to be all punny here, but it's yeah. true. They don't they don't want you to be happy or they see that you're doing something great and they're just like, F her. Yeah. She's got it figured out. I don't like that because I don't have ish figured out. Yep. And I just don't want her to be successful. And yeah. if I have an influence, which some people do because of reviews, because of Instagram, because of yeah. there's the dark side of the web. So, I, but that's one of the things that really truly motivates me is when I know a customer is giving me their time and they are genuinely wanting my product, not for the sake of crapping on me on Google review, but because they want they wanted a good service and they truly didn't get it, then that would really devastate me. So that's what pushes me to want to do things like get polished up on my courses and 
do things like that because I feel like I owe it to myself to yeah. not have to feel that way and let myself down and I owe it to the customers who are looking to my business to not let them down either that's my Definitely. huge motivator to be honest like I just all about the customers yeah yes. and the people please are me too like yeah. I'm friggin', that's part of it but at the same time that's where the self-advocating also has to come in because there's got to be that balance you can't just bend over backwards for people because then you're going to be working for free for the rest of your life yep yep very so very you true gotta find that balance but that is a that's also a motivator it's there's both there's both aspects to it yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah. um so the next question i have um is how do you avoid burning out so when you're getting tons of orders or you've worked your your day job and yeah. then you have to do this so do you have any strategies to help you balance that plus your your um yeah. your mom life yeah your wifey life <laughs> yes yeah i think I think that some people are, I think some people are afraid of the burnout. I don't think you need to fear the burnout because I've had enough experiences in my life that have made me feel the most burnt out I have ever been in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you the work that I'm putting in, having a part-time job, which is Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 2.30, before that is picking up my kid, dropping my kids off to school, getting the lunches ready in the morning, picking them back. I'm not saying this because I want you to compare your life to mine. I'm saying like people in general, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is, is that I have a lot on the go, right? I have two businesses. I have that. I have a husband, you know, I have all these things and the thing that I just don't fear it. I think that's how I avoid the burnout is that I just don't fear it. So when I'm tired and I have cake orders, I take a 20 minute nap. I say no to things that I just aren't on the list of priorities. Mm -hmm. I, you know, again, try to advocate for myself. Mm -hmm. Those are things that, you know, like burnouts will happen. Like you'll feel tired. You'll feel like you can't go on. But I think that if you fear it, then it becomes this monster that you can't face at the end of the day. Yeah, it's so true. I've actually never heard anyone say that before. Yeah. Like, don't fear don't it because fe I, it's I do think, it's yeah, inevitable. it's one of those things that I think sometimes it overwhelms you so much of the burnout that you end up getting nothing done because right. you're like oh well don't want to tack all this on but yeah. maybe you could have accomplished it and you just well and that's just it like take I mean, it on exactly you you fear that you can't do it but i'm telling you i've been to the bowels of hell and back and I'm telling you, there are things that you will feel too tired for, but you, like anything, like when you run a marathon, your body can go the distance, but it's up to you if you want to complete it. Yeah, yeah. So it's up to you. You can let yourself hit that wall or you can push yourself to see this. This is, I can go that way. And, I'm, I, and I don't mean that to do it all the time. I'm not saying take on everything in the world. You have to set limitations to yourself. Yeah. But just if it happens to you, you do get burned out, learn from it. Go on with your day take the rest when you need just and then you won't you won't be fearing that it will happen again because you have set enough of a stone for yourself to be like okay I can move past it I've done it once I'll, I'll get through it again yep no that's that's awesome advice yeah. that's really good um the next question I have is so you can answer this either in your work professional world or with your business um but what is one thing you wish someone had told you before you entered the work world it sucks <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, we can all see it on our parents' faces, but, I mean, what I, like, oh, and I mean this with all honesty and, and I mean this genuinely, I would love nothing more than to be on a yacht <laughs> in, you know, Bermuda or somewhere, like, you know, I would, but at the end of the day, work is something that, again, you can't fear, and so that's why we're doing what we're doing, is we're making yeah. the best of work, right? Yeah. I'm doing something I love. I do need to work. I am not in a position where I can't. So I'm going to do something that I do want to do. And I think it's taken me such a long time in my life. You know, I'm no spring chicken. It's taken me a long time to realize that I don't want to do something I hate for the rest of my life. So if I have to work that corporate nine to nine thirty to two thirty Monday to Friday, then I'm you're you you're damn right I'm gonna do what I love on top of it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So like even yeah, if I have balance. yes exactly. So if I have to work that corporate life and be at that you know 
financial institution, well then, yes, give me my benefits and I will go home and <laughs> freaking feed my family eclairs. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you, I will, you have I it will going. do what I want to do. You don't own me, the man. Yeah. The corporate man. It's good to know that as well, right? Right. Is there's still options. Not, you there's can still work options. your nine to five and you can still do that. Yeah. And this is what I mean by don't be afraid of the burnout because yeah. you can have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. <laughs> you can. You just, you have to prioritize and it means sacrificing. Yeah. And sacrifices are part of the course in everything you do in life. And if you are afraid of sacrificing something now, you best believe you're going to be sacrificing something later down the road. Yeah. So definitely. don't fear that because it'll get you. Yeah. One way or another, it'll get you. It'll ya. get you. Yeah. So but it just, you have a choice as to what it is you want to sacrifice. Yeah. So you be- better make your choices wisely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next question I have, first of all, how long has it officially been that you've been in business? Is it just over a year? Shoot. I think it's, it'll be two years this March. Okay. Yeah. So almost two years. Yes. So mm-hmm. out of those two years, what is one accomplishment that you are extremely proud of? Just starting. Yeah. Like, damn. <laughs> like that. It's a huge that, ac- accomplishment. Well, only because, huge. again, like I've learned so much in the year and a half or however long it's been now that I've, that I've started that I realized, like, oh, starting is such a scary thing. Like, I've seen, like, even the person that I've done her wedding cakes for, when she came to me saying that she wanted to start her own business and seeing her say, you know, I want to start my own. And just what a leap of faith you have to have in yourself. Like, do you know it's, like, the greatest self-confidence you can give yourself is doing something that you've been putting off for the longest time and actually starting it? Like, what oh, a yeah. shock to the ego that is. Mm-hmm. Being like, I can't freaking did it finally jumping in showed making you it happen. Andrea yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I did it yeah it's true though it's huge because for so long you talk yourself out of it mm-hmm. that when you finally freaking do it you're like told you bitch yeah. <laughs> like, you it's know so what true I mean? it's told so you true. I could and but... <laughs> I think a lot of the times people forget that that is a huge accomplishment it's I think it's the most a huge important. like big part of us yes. Getting start, I mean, getting started mm-hmm. and actually following through with it is yes. it's really, really, really difficult to do. It's difficult to do. You are literally your most vulnerable when you start your own crap yeah. because you're like, no one's going to like me. I know. I know is anyone going to read it? Is anyone care? Yes, it's true. <laughs> Hello, yeah. is there anyone out there? <laughs> you know, it's true. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. true. So I think that that's the, the most, that's the most. It's yeah. everything. I think it's everything. Awesome. I love it. Um, the next question I have for you is in your job, what always sounds like a good idea at the time, but rarely is starting my website. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I need to do that. No. Um, oh, I think being too haste. This is where I'm very happy that I do have the natural ability to be patient Mm -hmm. because good things come to those that wait. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that. So anytime, and I've been burned, I've been burned so many times by this. Anytime that I've tried to push something too fast Mm -hmm. or if I've procrastinated on something, I haven't given it its rightful time, I really truly end up not being satisfied with the outcome of something yeah or I've just hated it altogether and it either takes away from my love of what I do or it's made me second guess myself as the person running the show right 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 so that to me is something I really I am I have I am notorious for procrastinating with certain things mm-hmm. I've gotten so much better with it with age but it's been a long, slow boat to China with this one. Like, it really has. So I think now, as you get older and you somewhat get wiser, I think that's one of the things that I've really tried to focus on. Yeah. Is giving things the proper time. Yeah. It needs to happen. That's yeah. really good. I I definitely can agree on that. Mm-hmm. I sometimes can be the worst procrastinator ever. Yes. And I think after many years of knowing what that life yes, is like it's when, stressful. when you take the time to put 
effort into it, you're like, whoa, that's what came out of that? Yes. <laughs> and that's what it is. And I, I, I think the reason why I've always procrastinated is because I've always managed to pr produce good results from yeah. my procrastination. But when I've given myself enough time for something, I've produced amazing results. Yeah, it scares exactly. scares me how good And you're like, yeah. oh my gosh. Yes. Wow. I could have been, all this time, all this stress, why? Yeah, I know. Why? Why? This is yeah. what this looks like? It brings kidding? flashbacks yes. out to like university yes. times writing essays. <laughs> I was going to say. It'd be yes. like the night before and I'm yes. like, that's all it took? Yes. Like, if I wrote this a month ago, I wouldn't be here at 4 a.m. Exactly. Three hours before it's Hot due. Regrets. <laughs> regrets. It's true. Hot oh, regrets. Oh my we goodness. Just, all we can do is yeah. from them. Them, but it's true. It's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Very, very time. true. Time. Time. Time, time is management. totally... Oh, time management. Skill number one to learn when you start a business. And time if you management. you don't got it, it'll get you. Yeah. It'll definitely. Get, it'll get you. Definitely. It'll get you. Um, so my next question is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, what movie or book character do you find that you most relate to or feel like you were most similar to? Daria. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Daria. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> Way um, back. <laughs> in terms of who I, oh God, who I relate to? Or I you think, I think we all wish we're to. Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> like, I mean, are we all really? Got a little bit of Miranda in me, I suppose, but I don't know. I think, oh, God, I really see myself in a lot of different characters. Um, you know, I really get excited when someone shares my name on the big screen, like in The Devil Wears Prada. Uh, yeah, Even yeah. though she said, said her name was Andrea. I was like, oh, I'm not here for that fancy stuff. You yeah. just call me Andrea. But no, I um, I just, yeah, I don't think I really have, have ever related to anybody. I think when I was a kid, it was always The Little Mermaid. Yeah. But um, in terms of, I think that's what... I, I think when I look at people on TV screens and stuff like that and characters, I always think that I wish I could be like them, mm -hmm. but I don't really know if I've ever found someone that I truly relate to. Maybe the girl in Gone Girl who, like, <laughs> oh I'm, my just goodness. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. But I, I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's, it's a hard a really question. That's a good question. I like that It's a pretty question. loaded question as it well. It is. Yeah, but you know, it's fun. I don't, um... That's okay. Maybe maybe you can come back and, and think of something, and then we can add, add some Melissa notes. Melissa Gilbert. <laughs> People say I look like her, but no, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my goodness. That's okay. Um, okay, so the next question. Megan Frigga Markle. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Queen. Or she's no. not queen. Princess. Princess. <laughs> um, so next question I have yes. is, if you could broadcast one sentence to mm -hmm. every cell phone, TV channel, and radio station in the world and have it translated in each country's language, what would the sentence say? Oh, shoot. This is a good one. <laughs> this got to be really good. Something that will bring us all together that we can all relate to. I'd say something crass, but then people are like, I'm never buying cake from you ever again. <laughs> what do you do on your spare time? No, I think, um... Hmm. That's a good one. In every language. Ha. Huh. I'm gonna have to come back on that That's one. That's okay. Yeah, it's a we good can, one. We can come back. I love that. We, we I can really think We can about come that back one. and have a an edited jump back in. Mm, um I think about that one. Okay. Mm. To the next question yes. is what oh. Oh. I know it. it. Your mother is always right. Oh. You know how many times I have freaking oh. been like, my mother is always right. Yeah. I hate it. It's hard to admit that, for sure. And I think the older you get as well, you're like, oh, listen to your mother. Oh, my that's goodness. The, that's the one. <laughs> listen to your mother. Period. That's it. <laughs> it's not even your mother's always right. It's listen to your mother. That's it. That's the one. How many times I should that's, have listened to my it. mother? Oh, I oh, hate yeah. it. I don't hope oh, she yeah. never sees this podcast, <laughs> but I hope to God my children do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you hope that it's they get so the text true. and the message. Yes. Yeah. Listen to your mother. It's so true. And again, it's I think it's fucking true. something that you don't realize until you're an adult yes. or you're 
a spouse oh, or growing up, my a mom, mother. My mom didn't know shit. <laughs> she, she knew nothing, John Snow. She legit did not know anything. No one could tell me different. Mm -hmm. But had I listened to my mother, I'm telling you, I would have been out of a few. No late night hot regrets when you listen to mom. Definitely. Listen but to you mom. know what? Some things I think about too is yes, I agree with that statement, mm -hmm. but would you also be where you are now and Hell would you also no. have learned the lessons <laughs> that you learned you know I mean no. sometimes you gotta learn those you lessons do. you gotta go through some tough things you and I do. mean if you did listen and were in a straight line your whole life I mean I don't think it would it's be true. as you wouldn't, adventurous yes. and exciting and you wouldn't be as probably a bit scary yeah. at the same time there's a know? reason why you have those late night hot yeah. regrets it's to keep you in check and to make sure you don't do that ish ever again yeah because if you were just doing something because for the sake of being told to do it you never really understand Absolutely. the depth of it yeah have you not felt Live its and warm learn. embrace Live yeah it's hot <laughs> warm embrace it's so true but yes but there are some things that I really should have listened to my mother on that I didn't necessarily have to learn right the right for. right but yeah I think I think yeah listen to your mother that's it she knows everything she's She's from Jersey. She knows it all. She's from Jersey, yes. She is. And that's, that's exactly how it should be in every language. If you could say it in every language in a Jersey accent, that's how it needs to be broadcast. <laughs> Love it. That's true. Um, okay, so next question is, yes. what is something you are passionate about, mm -hmm. and what is something that you wish you were more passionate about? Oh, I wish I was more of a morning person. Okay. Frig, man. It is hard. Yep. Yeah. And then it what is, is something hard. that you are passionate about? Mm, a lot of things. I think, you know what? One of the things that I, um, I've had some really low moments in my life where things have just really kind of sucked. I never saw that thought that I would get like through it mm -hmm. I thought it was like the end of my life mm -hmm. but one of the things that I think I've always really maintained is that I've always really wanted to live mm -hmm. I've been depressed mm -hmm. I've had anxiety and there have been times where I just did not see how I was going to get through it mm -hmm. but for whatever reason I don't know if it's just my DNA makeup or it's just my intrusic you know glasses half full kind of mm -hmm. innate part of me even though shit is hitting the fan yeah I've always wanted to live I've always found passion to live I don't think that the government could try to kill me off if they wanted to with some <laughs> MLK Ultra like there's no way that that could happen because no matter how shitty things get in my life, I'm always so curious to see how they're going to turn out. Wow, that is so important to hear and to let people know as yeah. well. Yeah. I think especially because being a business owner, being yeah. an entrepreneur, there's so many low moments. And I yeah. mean, that's just being an entrepreneur. Yeah. There's also being... A friend, mm -hmm. a, a spouse, a mother, yeah. I mean, there's a family member, there's so many more things that you go through, and a lot of times it's hard for people to see it, after yes. the darkness and after that, you and know, so it's, it's, it's interesting so to hear that perspective of someone who true. feels it, you're mm -hmm. in the darkness, mm -hmm. but you're kind of like, but let's kind of see, and, and know, that's incredible true. that that's the perspective that yeah. you have, and I think it's something that... I wish could be more contagious to other yeah. people because a lot of people have a really hard time to like seeing, seeing the forest through the everything. Yeah. And I think that that's really the secret. Cause I, I've always kind of wondered why, because I've, I've been through things where I just don't think, I think a less, not a, not a lesser person. I wouldn't want to say that a, a person in a lesser state of mind would maybe not continue with their own life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to put anything out there for anybody, but what I'm saying is, is I think the reason, the secret to a lot of it, if I really had to pinpoint it, besides DNA, besides whatever, whatever the case may be, I think it's long term. Seeing something long term, when you have the ability to look past your own nose in a situation mm -hmm. and see that, you know what, there's a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And I think that it will get better. It yeah, will get better. and you know what, and. I never even really 
to be honest, I never really even thought, because when I was in the thick of things in my own life, I never even really thought that things would get better. That's mm. not even the thing that I thought things, it would happen. I actually thought it would get worse. Mm. But I always saw long term, like, well, how, how much longer could it get worse? Right, right, right. You know, so it may get worse. I'm yeah. not going to tell you that it won't because it could. What's what's the timeline of that going to be? But every in every situation, exactly, and in every situation in my life, I've always seen a pattern. Things are always darker, darkest before the dawn. Mm-hmm. So I think that um, in my in my own personal experience, I've seen people, not even myself, go through hell. You know, just when you think something's gone bad, it gets worse, and just when you think things get worse, worse it gets even more downhill from there you know what I mean and then you see people out there who are still continuing on because I have my sister always has, says this she always says God always gives you double for your trouble and I think mm, that interesting. I think that if you have the guts to stick out whatever God's putting you through or whatever, whatever you want to call it God universe however you see it mm-hmm. whatever however you view things if you have the guts to see it out then I think that there's a great reward at the end of it for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I, maybe that's what it is for me. I don't know. Mm. I just think that I think that you have to look long term. Things are shit right now. Yes, they are. Yeah. They may not get better. Yeah, that's true. But at the end of the day, there's got to be something that comes from it. Yeah, yeah. Some, and it's your choice whether or not you're going to stick it out or not. But I love it. Yeah. Passion for life. Have a passion for life, man. Love Why it. not? Yep. I love it. Um... So the next question I have is, um, what doesn't exist, but you desperately want or need it? Shoot. I'm not giving you guys my 100 (laughs) quick ways to get rich. (laughs) So yeah, you don't have to answer it, but maybe maybe there's something that, Um, I don't know, that at the moment with your business or your personal or your family life that you just be would be like oh I was president <laughs> everyone would have a living nanny <laughs> and you'd have to do whatever you want and paid for never have to pay out of pocket comes with massages Ooh, yes. I'm down <laughs> all kinds yes I think um, oof, something in my business I think that honestly there's got to be I just wish things were more like we get so much for free online. We get so much for free online. I don't even think I could be um, in the position that I am right now if I hadn't been able to see people show me how they do things. Right. Right. Like we, YouTube videos or like Pinterest yes. how to's or something yes. like that. Yeah. We are so fortunate that we have so much showing us what to do mm-hmm. all the time. Oh, yeah. What I wish if we can, you know, build on that and go forward with that is I wish that there'd be a way for me to do like to learn those things in a way where I'm not having to research until my finger fall off on how to do that quicker and more efficiently. Mm-hmm. I spent so many hours on YouTube researching how to do things. And I know I could just go and take a course and blah, 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 blah. But that's not feasible for everybody. Right. And currently, it's not feasible for me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And it would be time, money, whatnot, whatever the case may be. It's just not something that I could do without having to volunteer a lot of my time. That's the thing right, that I have to right, do. Right, right, right. And, and it's not because I don't have the time, but it's just what that time looks like. That means I have to make sure that something is in line for me to add, like to allocate that time for that. And that's very hard because I'm already giving up so much and sacrificing so much that I just can't sacrifice that at this time. Right, right, right. So if there was something that I could, that could be in place for me to be able to do those things faster and more readily available at my fingertips and more efficient so that when I'm searching something, it just narrows it for me so I'm not waiting through the garbage. That would be lovely. Right, right, right. That's my wish. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Without giving too much right. of your, your big ideas. Yeah, yeah, without giving you my million dollars more. Yeah, watch. Now Facebook's going to come out with this friggin' app because our phones are on and they're listening to our conversation. Siri's listening at all Siri's times. Siri's listening. Of course. Um, okay, the next one I have is... Um, what do you like to do that is traditionally considered masculine? 
Uh, I play soccer, I guess. I don't know if that's traditionally considered masculine, but there's only men playing it on a high level, so I guess that would be considered that. Um, I like to play in an NFL fantasy football draft. Mm -hmm. Um, And I also enjoy watching baseball Mm -hmm. at games, like going to games. I would love to tour and see all the baseball diamonds. Mm-hmm. Highly, the one that I've been to in the states, uh, besides the Yankee Stadium, which was a really beautiful, the new one mm-hmm. is a beautiful facility, um, uh, and field. But the one that I really liked so far that I saw was the one in Pittsburgh. It was mm-hmm. truly stunning. And even if you're not someone who enjoys baseball, I suggest you go there because it is worth the view alone. Oh, it's nice. a beautiful stadium. It's, it okay. is just nice. It's a b- very beautiful diamond. Very, very nice. Very, very well done. And it's intimate too, which I really like about that. So you're really feeling like the camaraderie with the fans and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, I love that. I highly love recommend that. that. Yeah. So. I think going to different sporting cities are, are, is so, so much cool. Fun. Such a like, fun community aspect. Fun. You and, know what? Yeah. And I think that's why. And it it shouldn't be considered masculine, but I guess it is in this day and age. I can't deny the fact that we, we as a, as a society watch pro athletes and they're all men typically Mm -hmm. on a high level. Um, but it's, they're just cheering and I don't know, there's something fun about it. There's fun about being together in a stand and cheering as a group. And when, you know, like when Josh Donaldson hits dingers when he was, when he was playing for the Blue Jays and watching the crowd just but the whole stadium shake. Oh yeah, like, I get goosebumps wow, thinking about all just that. even rewatching it yeah. on highlights. The like, bat flip, just Come on. oh my god, <laughs> like just those so I have good. Yeah. Just thinking about such, it, but it's true. such good moments. And I yes. mean, again, it's all about their community. It's People true. coming together with one like-minded goal, something that you can relate it's to true. each other about. Just goes to show you how much our society craves it. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's so true. And imagine so if true. it was all women. <laughs> one right, day, one good. day, especially with the soccer. I mean, yeah. they're trying to get paid. Like, yes, I don't want to say the big bucks, but like the normal bucks that all the the men get paid I am, too. I'm not one to pin genders against genders, but I have to say, like, women's soccer is way for me personally way more entertaining than men's soccer. And the reason being is because you don't see someone fall to the ground and roll around on the ground for 30 minutes. In what would if we're gonna call a spade a spade consider be considered a sissy yeah action a pussy action <laughs> a female action yeah and yet the women are out there oh playing yeah harder bloody than noses men, getting not, getting their hair pulled everything. like yeah. just getting beat the yeah. f up and I'm telling you right now it's a treat to watch yeah mm-hmm. um, the next question and the last question I have for you is. What do you think people think when they first see you? What do they assume about you that may be true and it might may actually be false? You know what? That's a really great question. I have, A, never cared to ask about what my first impression is, and no one's ever, never given it to me. Okay. So I've never been told... Oh, I thought this about you before I knew you. I've never been told. I don't think I've. I don't think I've ever been told that. Not that I can think of on my own. Okay. I don't think I've ever been told that, and I, um, I have, I can't ever think of a time that I've actually asked that. I don't think I've ever asked what was your first impression of me or how did I come across like when you first met me. I mean, so. I really don't know. Yeah, that's okay. I really don't know what people think of me. <laughs> Maybe it's better that way. But no, um, that's, that's okay, though. Yeah. And I mean, I, I can be your first person. Yes. So I met Andrea when we were in high school, and my first impression of you was you were very confident, very strong-willed. Um, I felt like you knew who you were, wow. you knew what you wanted, and you were going to get it. Girl, you got hoodwinked. And, yeah. <laughs> No, not at all. <laughs> but that's that's my impression of you, you. And, and I'm sure many people feel the exact same wow, way because thanks. it's still carried on. Wow, the time. shoot. <laughs> I feel like I went through like a weird identity crisis where there no. was a lot of like tight pants and loose shirts for a while there. And 
that I don't no. really know, but that's great to know. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that with me. Yeah, I would I would think that would be my first impression. Thanks. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where we're gonna end. Yes. But before we end, mm-hmm. I wanna make sure that you give your business a proper shout out. So if there's yes. anything that you Website feel coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> if you feel like there's anything that you didn't discuss about your brand, if there's anything that's coming up, um, even if yeah, there's there's certain clients you're looking for, or there's different projects you are working on, yes. or what you want to start working on. Um, feel free to shout it out and, yes. and let everyone know what you're up to. Oh, thank you, um, thank you so much for even just doing this first and foremost. Oh, I really welcome. appreciate it. I feel so honored to even be here. And thank you. You are truly the inspiration as to why I did this. So oh, I want you to know you. that. So thank you <laughs> thank from the bottom of my heart for pushing me uh, to do this. Um, and yeah, I think that the things the things that I'm looking forward to with my business and the things that I would like my customers to know is that um, really trying to go the beans events route. I'm still doing bean streets that'll always be there, but I really want to expand on this creativity aspect. I feel like there's a lot of a lot more possibilities that I can do there, mm-hmm. especially um, just being able to converse with a customer and telling and then telling me what they want and then giving them something that they really love at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and just keeping them involved in the project and here and there just seeing them happy if you're my customer I want like there's nothing more that I want than for you to be happy with what you get and seeing you happy gives me some like cheap thrills like legitimately cheap thrills I get so high on that because knowing that you've got something from me that I could then in turn give to you oh what a beautiful feeling and um yeah and if there's anything that I could ever help my customers with Mm -hmm. I would love the opportunity to as well too so that way it's not just you helping me it's me helping you as well too so if you have a business that you're trying to start out with or you have something that you need help with I'm here for you all the time. I end up making really good friends with a lot of my customers because I do, I genuinely care. I genuinely care. Definitely. definitely. I'm not just going to be someone who takes your order and you'll never see me again. I want to, I'll follow up with you, see how your family's doing, see how you're, you know, whatever it is that you talk to me about because I do genuinely care. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, So you can follow Andrea on Instagram at beans treats yep, beans as well as beans treats. address mm-hmm. beans underscore, underscore treats, treats yeah, and beans, beans uh, underscore event there you go yep. so we'll also put that up so you can see it but yeah yes. just saying it as well yes. um thank you so much thank for being my you. first podcast thanks guest. for being my friend yeah thank you for being my friend <laughs> i love you i love you oh, too so proud of you <laughs> so my thank you friend. so much for tuning in and um we will see you very soon bye. thank you bye Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I greatly appreciate the time that you took to listen and learn a bit more about another woman in business who is truly moving and shaking the world. If you would like to keep in touch with Andrea, you can follow her on Instagram. Both of her accounts are at beans underscore treats and at beans underscore events. She has also generously provided a promotion code for all of our listeners today to receive 15% off of her services. You can use this by quoting, have you met her yet podcast. If you're a business owner looking for inspiration and guidance in growing your business, I would love to help you. Our mission at Pink Crown Creative is to work alongside entrepreneurs and business owners with the goal of encouraging them to launch, market and grow their business. We do this by inspiring them to share their story through marketing strategy, social media, and web design. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please subscribe, rate, review, and share it with a friend who you think might enjoy it too. These small actions truly mean the world to a small business owner like myself. I also will be giving my listeners $25 off my creativity strategy hour. By using promo code creativity and love, you can use it at checkout and get it on my website, which is available on the show notes or at www.pinkcrowncreative.com. 
You can also stay up to date with the latest podcast releases, behind the scenes, and insider info about each guest by following us on Instagram at Have You Met Her Yet series or by signing up for our weekly newsletter, which will bring each episode right to your inbox. Thank you so much for listening. It truly means the world. We wish you a wonderful week and hope that it is filled with creativity and love.